2017, I began with uh, 200 bags, uh, and then within seven days, I had zero chicks. Yeah, I tried again for a second time. I had zero birds within three days. <laughs> and then I almost gave up. Keep it farming with AIM Agriculture. Welcome once again our subscribers to our YouTube channel. If you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel, kindly hit the subscribe button. You'll always get an educative video every week. You'll always get a success story every week. My name is Elizabeth Nene Chalo. Uh, I come from this area. It's Kideini. It's in Ziu, Makueni County. Uh, this is Chicken Basket Poultry Farm. It began in 2017, uh, around October. Uh, I think it was a passion that I had in poultry, and then I went ahead to see if I can do it. In 2017, I began with uh, 200 birds, uh, and then with Within seven days, I had zero chicks. Yeah, I tried again for a second time. I had zero birds within three days. <laughs> and then I almost gave up. And then 2018, I did some fa Facebook follow-up on those people who, who do poultry farming. I was also keen on the bird that I wanted. I didn't want pure layers. I didn't want pure kenyeji. There was a reason why I wanted improved Kenyeji. Reason number one, because I can have them for meat, I can have them for eggs, I can have them for, just to sell to people. Like in Makwendi County, we have a project funded by the World Bank. So I get farmers, I get suppliers who want to buy these small chicks, like one week, two weeks, and then they go sell to the Vikundis. The Muradi is to help those who are low at least grow. When they come by as a Kikundi, they go Lisha and then they sell them. I started with 200, within even one year I had the 200. So I did them for eggs, I didn't sell. I only sold the cocks. So with the eggs I did a whole year. So in 2017 I had only this structure, I had the 200 birds for eggs. I only sold around 40 cocks, so I had a whole 150, 140 for eggs. I used to sell them on the, on the market. Sometimes I used to go there with them to look for market. And then I was there. In, 20, in 2019, I think I kept 1,500 birds. Yeah. And then after I, by then I had this structure. And then once I got 500 for, for eggs, now I was able to sell. I began now having a smile on my face. I could do the third structure. I had 250 for eggs. So I had 500 plus 250, I had 750 comfortably for eggs. The market was not a challenge to me. My day starts at five. It's just like any other day. It's an office job. It's an office because it has records. I have a feeding program, a vaccine schedule. You see, it's a, like an office to me. It's only that the office is it's sometimes there, sometimes it is not there. Because my structure, I use it as a brooder room. A brooder room. When the chicks are too many, I do away with my office, but naturally it's, it's, it's like an office. I have to, to make sure that by eight I'm out of the laying side so that I give them time to lay. Silence should be maintained. And then after I leave this area now, it's when I go to the office work now. I do the recording of the food that, that they have taken. 
I do some calculations. If I don't have enough food, how much should I source and where should I get the food? And then at around 11, I should look for greens. They need greens. I don't have to give medicine every now and then. I have to look for skooma. We have rivers where people have grown skooma and cabbages. So I have to go look for cabbages, skoomas, and then I give them at around 11. At 12, I have to take the first two crates of eggs by noon. And then I begin now the cleaning for the second time. And then at three, they take food. At four, I'm off to the other duties of a lady. I am a lady, <laughs> yeah. At five, I collect the last bunch of eggs. And then at night, a small summary of what I've done over the day. If I have some mortalities for the small chicks I do, I do the records. If on the other side, we still have growers. If the growers have issues like the stool is not okay, I see what I can do. I still have some challenges. Uh, poultry farming is not a, 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 a bed of roses or a, a flowing river that has no bumps. It has a lot of bumps. Like one challenge is electricity. Here we don't have electricity unless we use solar for brooding. For brooding, you have to sleep two hours, you awake like three hours. Because you have to ensure, like if the chicks have come today, the first week, it's like you don't get even a drop of sleep. One, you have to ensure, I use um, brooder jikos. You have to ensure that the jikos are, are burning the, the good temperatures that the chicks the, are okay. That is a big challenge, electricity and also the sleepless nights, the first seven days. Then after that, you are done. The second challenge is by then, not now. By then, I didn't have the skills. I only had the passion. Yeah, the skills I didn't have. I, I struggled a lot because I brought two badges, uh, just like I've said, two flocks. When I bring three days, I don't have chicks. Seven days, I don't have chicks. But I thank God is that now I've tried to engage people who have done so much in, in poetry. I've also got through the internet. Uh, yeah. Then at the moment, I don't have that challenge on the side of skills. Earlier, I had a challenge of when, how, what quantity should I give to my chicks? And then after I got the guide, I was okay. I have a word for those people who have lost their jobs, anyone who has left school from four and feels that he needs to have some shilling for him or herself. I have a word for him or her. One, poetry ni uchafu, na poetry ni mali, kuku ni mali. If you have a chick, you are rich. Why? Because, one, you have me or any other successful poultry farmer who can help you grow with him. Like me, I didn't find myself where I am. Just like I've told you, I had 200 chicks and they died all of them. So someone helped me out to where I am. So again, I can also help someone who has the interest and maybe doesn't have an idea on how he or she can do poetry. One, I will not encourage him to come and buy a two-week-old chick, no. I want him to start from the point one. I can organize how she can get chicks or he can get chicks. Begin from that day one. Have the brooder, have the sodas, have the drinkers and the feeders, and then see how he can take care of the chicks from day one. It is not a hard job. It's only you have to have the passion and then you are there. I'll give you an example with uh, a flock of 50. A flock of 50, you will spend like 5,000 collecting what you need and 10,000 for the flocks. Ah, uh, sorry, 5,000 for the flocks. 
roughly 10,000, you are good to go. You have feeds, you have water, you have your labor, you yourself. And then, we, as time goes, like in one, one, two, three months, we will spend like 30,000. After the third month, I've given you an example of 50 flocks, right? You'll, out of the 50, you'll have like 15 cocks and then 35, the she ends, right? Once you sold the 15, you'll get cash to give you food for the layers. So you'll have spent on like 40,000. Five, 10 on the flocks and then 30 on the feeds. And then what else do you need from your pocket? Nothing. Why? Once you sold the cocks, you got food for the layers. 35. 35 is a crate. From my farm, a crate goes for 360 shillings, right? Within four days, they have bought themselves another sack or almost a sack of layers. So, you have spent like 40,000 and then from there, no cash from your pocket. It is cash within your poultry farm. And then, with that, that 360 a week, a month, a year, and then you less what you had, you have a smile on your face. I advise you that you join. When you join, there is more and more behind the struggle. Welcome once again our subscribers to our YouTube channel. If you haven't subscribed to our YouTube channel, kindly hit the subscribe button. You'll always get an educative video every week. You'll always get a success story every week. We are back in Makweni County. We are at Elizabeth's farm in Ziu, in Ziu village. We want to teach her some new things. Kindly watch, take a pen and a paper and learn together with her. She asked me, she's having a challenge in terms of disease diagnosis and she's having a challenge in terms of knowing a healthy bird. I've shared a link above. You can also watch another video I did on signs or characteristics of a healthy bird. But to handle your question or solve your question, if you want to know your chicken are healthy, you don't even first need to look at the bird. There are things that we call KPIs, key performance indicators in chicken that you look at. The first KPI in chicken is the weight gain. Always weigh your chicken weekly. Not all of them. You can just take a sample, which you call a representative sample. And then you can look at the averages. Last week and this week, is there a plus or a minus? So if, you, if there's a plus, then is it in the right gradient? It means your chicken are doing well. The other thing you can look at is FCR, feed conversion ratio. What is the amount of feed the chicken have eaten vis-a-vis -vis the amount of weight they have gained? You can also look at the ratio. What is the amount of feed the chicken have eaten vis-a-vis -vis the amount of eggs they have laid. So when you look at the FCR, it should be below 2. Point, it should be below 2.1. Then you know you are doing quite well. What are some of the common things you need to look at when you want to know if your chicken are healthy? You can look at the eyes of the bird. A chicken needs to have a bright eye and rotating at an angle of 180 degrees, you know? You know a chicken is pecking down, but it's able to see a flying bird. So when you look at the eyes of the chicken, they should be healthy. But when you see your chicken closing their eyes as if they are they are they are dozing off, know there's a problem. Another thing you need to look at very well is the body conformation. A chicken needs to be stout, you know, it needs to be strong. The feathers are in place. They are smooth, shiny feathers. But if you see your chicken drooping feathers, we usually call it in a Malayman's language, imeva kabuti. They know there is a problem, right? So now, what is the problem? The chicken's eyes are watery, or the chicken's eyes are closing, the chicken is dozing off. The chicken's feathers are not smooth. The chicken is having a kabuti. What is the problem? What are some of the easiest ways for you to diagnose a disease. One, at the most common, 
actually external way of de determining whether the chicken is sick or not is a stool. You know how the stool of a chicken that is healthy or a normal chicken looks like? You know? It takes color of the feed the chicken is eating. Let's say the chicken is eating the feed that you bought from the shops, the concentrate. Mostly, the chick, the, the poop will be grayish with a, a white chalkish stuff, which you call it the uric acid. The chicken doesn't urinate. You understand? But if the poop is watery, first, if it's a diarrhea, there's a problem. That's a gastrointestinal problem, right? And if the stool has changed color, and the most common disease the chicken suffer from is coccidiosis, by the way. And coccidiosis stool takes three colors. The first one, the stool is, is mucaline, like mucus, like chalk, like white. Then it goes to a chocolate color. And finally, blood. Blood, it's just blood. In the initial stage, when the coccidiosis attacks the chicken, it eats the walls of the ileum, which are, are, which are aligned by the mucus. So this is the mucus that then is excreted by the chicken. At this time, the chicken is struggling, trying to eat and surviving. When the chicken is so strong, it can surpass the weight of the coccidia. And this is a very common problem in the chicks below two months. You lose many chicks below two months. But chicken like this, like you've told me your chicken, you're seeing their poop is not normal. Chicken above two months, it's not easy for them to die from coccidia, but they get a lot of stress from coccidia. Their weight gain is so compromised, right? So, in the second stage of coccidia, after now the coccidia has fed on the ileum and the blood capillaries, it feeds on blood, it defecates blood in the system, the blood mixes with poop, then it produces a chocolate poop, like you can see that chocolate yeah. dropping in form of a diarrhea. Now, in the full-blown stage of coccidia, the chicken is so weak, you can imagine the stomach pains of having a disease like, um, a disease like let's say, amoebiasis. You can imagine that pain. The chicken is in that pain. It cannot feed. But the coccidia has to feed. So the coccidia will feed and then defecate in the system, which is blood, and the chicken now will just poop that blood. That's when you can see there's that blood. It's in the full-blown stage. Other diseases that we can di di diagnose them from the poop basically is, um, is typhoid, the greenish watery stool, cholera, the light green, I can call it lilac stool in color. Those are the two, but they're not very common at the moment, right? I can see you're doing semi-free range, which is a good thing. Your birds are feeding from outside, basking outside and sleeping indoors at night. Do you know the most common challenge with semi-free range? Ectoparasites. Actually not ectoparasites, endoparasites, right? With these ones, you have no option but increase the frequency of deworming. If you want to realize more eggs, if you want to realize a quicker weight gain, you have to do much, much deworming. After every two months, deworm. Don't miss to deworm because of the frequency of roundworms, you know, because you know, uh, most of these endoparasites are edaphic. Edaphic is soil. They use soil as a medium for multiplication. They lay the eggs there, they hatch there. Then when the chicken are scratching, they ingest them. I don't know if you've killed a bird from your farm and you've looked at some of the intestines. Actually, endoparasites, even to an ex they go to an extent of even blocking the, the intestinal or the gut system. And the bird will die from that. Well, I've done a video before on characteristics of a healthy bird. And I remember mentioning that the comb and the, the comb should be firm and erect and pink in color or bright in color. I tend to correct that a little bit. The comb can give you signs of a disease, especially if you have a disease like pox, fall pox. You find that it's spot or it's dotted, then you can find some small pox coming from it. 
But the comb is only erect and firm in chicken that are pullets and young cockerels. You'll find that as a chicken is aging, yeah. as it's growing old, the comb becomes big and it falls yeah. on the side, yeah. right? So the comb can only be a sign of disease if it has turned from the normal color to purple. Yeah. Or the comb can only be a sign of a disease if the comb has turned from the normal color pink to very pale white-like, yeah. right? Basically, that's what the comb can give you. But you cannot mostly rely on the comb for judgment of the disease. All right? So I'm happy you're doing well. At least you've learned something. I hope so. And I encourage you to subscribe to our YouTube channel. Yeah. Watch more, more and more educative videos. Always give us a shout when you have a shortage of information. Yeah. We'll always advise you. All right? Yeah. Cheers. And thank you so much for hosting us.